It's race day. And you only have one bike to choose. Which one <laughs> is it? Yeah, hopefully we'll answer that question for you. Let's get on topic. Hey everybody, it's Thomas with Get Out Arizona and you are watching another great episode of Bike Showcase on Toolbox Topic. And I'm joined once again by my co-host Brandon Van Leeuwen. Brandon, how the hell are you? I'm doing all right. Yeah, Did you have a good weekend? It was all right. It was all right? <laughs> yeah. The usual, a little yeah. bourbon, a little pickleball. No pickleball this weekend. Ah, see that's... It's too cold to do anything. Oh, look, listen to this guy. It's too cold. For shame, it's not too <laughs> cold. <so. laughs> Once again, we're coming to you from Jack Bicycle Stores of West Phoenix at Goodyear, Arizona. It's where the cool kids hang out and me. And today we've got a great bicycle showcase. When I saw these two bad chickens out <laughs> on the showroom floor, I said, we got to do this. So they're flashy. They, they are good. flashy. They're race nice. Bikes. I tell you what. I love race bikes. I know. If this one was a large, I probably would have already thrown money down on it, if not taken it home. Um, and the same thing with this one, but I digress. What we have here are two of Trek, what I would call their premier race bikes that are suited for different types of racing, although similar, yeah. different types of riders, although again, in that Ving diagram, there's gonna be similar overlap there as well. Um, and I almost wanna say it comes down to your riding style and personal preferences as, as far as that goes on what you're gonna choose because I think both of these bikes are amazingly capable. Both are very raceable bikes. I yes. mean, this is a race bike. Right. The tough fuel, man, it's they're, changed kind of, a lot. they're They're changing, it's uh, changing quite a bit. I happen to have the current version of the top fuel and I had a version of the top fuel two generations ago. Right. That bike was much faster, much better handling. Right. Less travel, a little less capable on the big stuff, but it was a, that was a race bike. Now. Top Fuel is evolving to something just a little bit different to me, so I might gravitate a little more to this guy next ah, time. Ah, okay. Maybe, maybe, All we'll right. see. Well, there's there's a little bit of a, a preview on, on what Brandon would suggest <laughs> as far as before we really dive into it. But I think what we've seen in general with the biking industry, again, and I've seen this with the camera industry as well, everybody wants one thing to do everything. And it, so it seems like some of those specialized bikes are now forced to become more versatile Correct. Um, as far as that goes, thus having a little bit longer travel in the suspension, um, a little bit different geometry in some cases for some bikes. So, well, let's talk about these two amazing bikes. Now, yeah. we have one that is aluminum, but a little bit higher spec on the group. And then we have one that is carbon, but a little bit lower spec on the group. So there's a give and take there. This is gonna be the nine seven, and this is the eight, if I remember correctly. That's no, this the is a seven. seven. This right. is a seven, so right. this has a D or XT group. This one comes in at uh, just over $3,600, and this one comes in at $3,300, or $4,300, 4299 excuse so me. So in the grand scheme of things, both are very on the entry level yep. side, um, but your price point is going to be wider on the top fuel than the Super Caliber, since Super Caliber only comes in carbon versions. Right, and that would be the 9.7, 9.8, and 9.9. Mm -hmm. And then so. you get 9.9 AXS, XTR, yeah. Right, all that you stuff, can so. drop a boatload <laughs> of money. So, well, let's start in the front, and work our way back like we normally do on okay. these, Brandon. Um, as far as uh, wheel set, they have a different wheel set. We've got a Kobe wheel set on this, and then we just have the Bontrager. It's the line comps on the this line one. Comps so a little, on bit, this. little bit more robust wheel set uh, on the top fuel. Uh, both are aluminum at this price point, right. but as you go up, you will start getting carbon, of course. Okay, we got disc brakes, four piston. Yeah. That's gonna be standard issue. Uh, 120 up front on correct, this. Correct, correct. Okay, and then we still have the 100, 100 on this. So you're gonna have a little bit less travel on here, and well, we'll get to that as we work our way back as far as that goes. So we've got air, air. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay? And at this price point, we're gonna see though the entry level offerings from right. RockShock on bit, both these. Yes, yes, correct, on the suspension fork, you're correct. So, okay. Yep. No knock block, yay! <laughs> knock block. <laughs> There's a knock block on that one. Now guys, by the time you've seen this, I will have released the knock block deletion video. I was so excited by that. Uh, so I hope you guys had a chance to watch it. If you didn't, I'm going to leave the card right up top here. Check that one out as we get rid of that pesky 
<laughs> almost cursed that pesky son of a gun. <laughs> so, um, so now as we move back everything, we have cables that are internally routed, of course. Using Trex proprietary control freak routing right. internally. Yeah, it's good. It's it works. Good. It gets the job done. Yeah. Now, now it's one of those things where this is the new, and Trek stopped doing model years, as you brought to my attention. These are right. gens, so these are both the current gens. We have the aluminum, that great Trek aluminum, um, but it's got the little stash. Yeah, for an aluminum bike, they put the uh, little storage compartment in there. Yep, but we do not have that on the caliber. No, no. The super caliber. And that's just going to be indicative because of the type of bike I it is. I think they're trying to keep the weight down. Yep. Um, it's, it's, it's a racier frame, and there's not as much room on this down tube as we get on the top fuel. Right. Not nearly as much. Mm -hmm. And if you're racing, I don't necessarily think you would want the secret stash. Maybe a yeah. little flask of bourbon or something yeah, like that. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so um, now as we move back, we have 60 millimeters of travel Correct. on a rear suspension, mm -hmm. but it's more just to kind of keep this your is, tire hugged to the yeah, terrain. Yep, this is Trek's proprietary ISO strut. Right. So instead of using pivots and bearings and things that weigh more, we're actually using the um, the characteristics of the carbon. Right. The carbon's flexing. Yes. But what's cool about that is it's very controllable. Since we do have a Fox fork uh, shock in inside here, the 60 millimeters, like as you mentioned, right. we can determine how quickly it rebounds, how quickly it compresses. Right. Uh, fully and we adjustable. can lock that out as well, correct? We can. And so it's all remotely locked do, out. Yep. If you want to do a hardtail, we've got that remotely locked out. Um, and coming back here, We've got the Fox, is this the Fox it's float? The Fox, it's the Fox yeah. float. So we've got the Fox float. Now this one again is fully adjustable, but this one you cannot lock out. This is gonna be completely active all the time. It will, it's, a, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a light lockout, or sometimes we call it. It's just, it, it firms it up. Right. And this is 110 millimeters. It's a 120 in the back. It's 120 well. in the back. Yep. Oh, so we've got 120, 120, 120. Okay, at one point it was 110 yep. in the rear. So, all right. So this one you're gonna be able to handle a few more bumps a few more hard Correct. shebangs. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> having a hard tail myself, well, when you hit, like I have a variety of bikes, but with no suspension and then rear suspension, it's a huge difference. And right. even that ISO speed decoupler that I have in my checkpoint, which I love my checkpoint, by the way, guys, <laughs> review's gonna be coming in a few weeks. I can feel that flex, but then there's still times where it's like, oh, right. I really feel like it bottomed out or however you would put that. So right. you're only going to get so much. This isn't a um, fuel EX, nor is it a slash. So there's only so much it's going to relieve as far as that point. Right. But these are race, race bikes. They weren't meant to be right. cushiony. And the 120 front. millimeters of travel, that's a lot to me for a right. race bike. It is. Uh, and so, it, you know, to, to back up a little bit, I would consider this uh, more an endurance race bike. Okay. Perhaps. It, it all depends. It's Again, very, the lines are getting blurry. It's very blurry. Yeah, You're right. It is. You're right. Um, we have through axles on both these bikes, of course, and I would expect mm -hmm. it at this. Um, now, this one, though, if I'm not mistaken, has the XT Dior, like I mentioned in the front. Yes. So we got an XT, uh, XT SLX. ST XLS. We got an mm -hmm. XT rear derailleur. derailleur. Mm -hmm. We have SLX shifters. This one actually has. Just SLX and Praxis. And Praxis. So, yeah. again, car or aluminum, higher group, carbon, lower group set. So, it really just depends. Mm -hmm. And the Praxis crank sets, I was a little iffy about them. They're, they're doing okay. Yeah, I have they're no, not bad. We have not seen any problems with them. They've been, they've been reliable. Yeah. I would love to see an SLX, SLX crank set on there, obviously. Wouldn't we all? We're <laughs> trying to keep the price points down, I, I, I'd imagine. So. Yeah. Well, and I don't know. I'm not going to sound like a sorry track, but at that <clears throat> price, I would expect SLX and SLX. You know, that's just hope. me <laughs> um, at that point. So, so overall, though, these bikes are very well equipped. And for anybody who is looking for that quote unquote, entry level race bike. Yeah. Um, and this one I think would be even more middle of the road. I mean, it we is, do have the is. Top Fuel 8 and then you can go into the carbon frame set. Right. Um, There's but actually, for the S caliber, for the super caliber, mm -hmm. that is the entry level model. That is, yes, correct. So, And I don't point a lot of customers to the super caliber to be quite honest with okay. you. And this why? is a very is specific rider. This okay. is a race, this to me is a race only bike for your everyday bike that you might want to take to South Mountain or you might want to take to Sedona. I don't think this is going to cut it. See, I'm the one who would buy that bike, though. I'd still tell Brandon, take my money because I don't have anything like this and I want something different to ride. It is a beautiful ride bike. I had a, I had a great opportunity to race the Super Caliber at McDowell Mountain. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Right. It was 
Super light, super agile, fast. I loved it. It was perfect for that course also. Yeah. Um, perhaps doing an, any other course, it wouldn't have 35, done 40 so miles on this, for, you're going to feel it. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Definitely. And so I have the pleasure also to race top fuels um, in some very long races, and it's, it's done me well for those um, those long extended endurance races. Right. Um, kept me Dust kept Don me would be a good one for this. He's Dust Don for sure. So now it's apples and oranges because we have carbon aluminum, but I am going to now insert the weight for <laughs> these two bikes and you can also insert a thumbs up and click oh. for the subscription and bell notification for all future videos yeah try to <laughs> slip that one in there so so now you've just said you're going to steer more people to the top feel as opposed to the super caliber so that kind of answers someone comes in and they're looking to differentiate between these two bikes and have yep. you help them pick the bike that works for them not we'll call it a one trick pony for the sake of conversation definitely more versatile definitely as as more that versatile goes, so. absolutely because most of the people that come in here that are going to race they're not just racers they want to do a little bit of everything right so in that case top fuel will suit their well, needs that's why we fine. just sell them a super caliber <laughs> and a fuel ex and we call it good or that <laughs> <laughs> like i'm joking guys that's not what brandon does but it's just again my mentality of having so many bikes i'm up to five bikes now dan pretty good yeah Soon to be six. Sick in the heat. <laughs> I'm going to need a new garage for to hold all my bikes is what it's going to end up being. So, all right. Is there anything else you want to add before we close on this, Brandon? Because I think we've actually touched on everything, you know, as far as the, the braking is very similar. we got through axles. we got same right. as far as components and everything like that. Um, geometry is going to be a little bit different, obviously, too. This is going to be more an aggressive because we got that race style geometry where this one is not. And this one has a dropper. This one does not. Right, keeping this boy with light. Yep. Now, if you're like me, though, you'd be like, F that, and you would add an external drop, <laughs> dropper from PNW. That link will be down below. Um, but for, again, yeah, I think we have two different segments of the riding community yep. represented yep. here. We are on our race side of things. Yes. But now it's going to really come down to the rider, what their needs and where they race and yeah, what kind of they ride. They are. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right, my friends, there you have it. That was actually... Hopefully not too long-winded and everything like that. A pretty short yet informative bike showcase with the current gen top fuel and the current gen super caliber. If you're looking for a race bike, more endurance racing, maybe more just lap maybe racing. More short course. Yeah. Uh, cross I could country. See almost like laps. Like if you had like a, a yeah. loop, you know, maybe even like the loop out at the white tanks or yeah. the strays or something like that. And you just had to do, you know, three loops around or something. That one might work. But again, guys, it really comes down to you, mm -hmm. what type of rider you are, what type of terrain you're doing. If you're looking for something just to go out every once in a while and blast out a fast ride, great option. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more versatile and the type of terrain you can ride um, and length of ride that you're going to be doing, you might want to consider the top fuel. So there you go. All right, like, subscribe, bell notification. It's the trifecta that we love here. It's gonna help out the video. It's gonna help out the channel. There's gonna be some links down below. The most important one though is to check Bicycle Stores of West Phoenix here in Goodyear, Arizona. If you have any questions about these bikes, any questions about the video, what you've seen in any of the other videos, you can follow that link, give Brandon a call or one of his great team members. They're all amazing guys and gals. They'd be more than happy to help you. Social media, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, the devil's work but it's necessary to get the word out for Get Out Arizona. So follow us on there too, show us some love. The links down below, the rest of them are affiliate links down, my friends. If you make a qualifying purchase, we'll receive a small commission. You will not be charged anything additional and that helps out with gas money, coffee money, and parking passes or park passes, I should say, for all the different places we go. It's the other trifecta we enjoy so much around here. So on that note, my friends, what do we say? Be kind to yourself and others, be amazing stewards on that trail and we have to ask, what are you waiting for? Get out Arizona. Yeah. We'll see you on that next adventure. Take care, everybody, and adventure safely. Oh. Hmm. <laughs>